It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Living Daily, episode 269, The Man Who Dies With The Most Stuff, by Kristen Glenn with TheMinimalist.com, and I'm Justin Mollick. Happy Labor Day for those of you in the US, and welcome back to another edition of OLD, or OLD, that's Optimal Living Daily, the podcast where I simply read to you from the best blogs and books I can find, covering topics like personal development, minimalism, and more. And today's post comes from TheMinimalist.com, but it's actually a rare guest post. And in the spirit of minimalism, I'm gonna keep this intro super short. So let's get right to the post and start optimizing your life. The Man Who Dies With The Most Stuff by Kristen Glenn with TheMinimalist.com. If I know anything about being an American, it's that the man who dies with the most stuff wins. At 13, I was well on my way to winning. Somehow I developed a love for bargains, off-season prom dresses, after Christmas sweater sales, thrifted jeans for a few bucks. I could buy more for less than anyone I knew. And I took pride in all that cheap stuff I accumulated as a middle-class, middle-American, middle-schooler. This ability to bargain, I thought, would win me coolness and popularity. Surely I would have far more clothes than my friends. But I didn't. Their closets were overflowing too. Shoes, bags, jeans. I kept buying more and more cheap clothing in an effort to keep up. Each season, our closets collectively spat out old trends as we shoveled in new ones. In a race to die with the most stuff, everyone wants to look good, so I too raced with shopping bags in hand through high school and college. By 23, I was much cooler than my 13-year-old self. I wanted to travel, live abroad, and experience life outside my hometown and my dorm. I still loved a bargain more than anything, but it wasn't financially feeble to schlep a crate of high heels around the world, so I bought a backpack. I carefully chose a few garments for the next several months and nervously stepped onto the plane. Things look different on the other side of the planet, especially on the winding rural roads of countries like Laos and Cambodia. With my nose pressed against dirty bus windows, I observed, life is far less shiny and new in that part of the world. There's more dirt and grass, both indoors and out. Only one word came to mind when I thought about my life back home, lavish. With eyes wide, I realized my selfishness for wanting and wanting and wanting, and never ever thinking about the impact that my want had on the rest of the world. Generally, people turn to a minimalist lifestyle to make their day-to-day existence easier, to save money, to save time, to focus on what's truly important. These reasons are admirable. They allow us to find meaning beyond our genes and gadgets. But my travels abroad turned me onto minimalism for a different reason. I slowly saw the impact of my consumption taking a toll on the environment and on others. It became a personal thing, and I realized that minimalism isn't just a lifestyle decision, but a chance to save humanity. It's a pretty bold statement, minimalism will save humanity, but over the following year, I became more convinced of the power that lifestyle choices have on changing the world. My time abroad changed my perspective, not only on what it means to live with less, but to live. To live is to make choices, day in and day out. And for a long time, I chose a good bargain, retail therapy, and new trends, over the chance to reduce pollution, carbon emissions, and landfill waste. It was time to start asking questions of myself and of the companies I supported for many years. In a few months, I'll turn 26. The past year of my life has been devoted to learning about fabrics, fashion, and consumption, and starting an ultra-versatile eco-clothing line with my close friend Shannon. Inspired by our backpacks and appalled by our former shopaholic selves, we began learning about how our shopping habits affect the rest of the world. We came across disturbing statistics Americans, while making up only 5% of the world's population, consume 25% of the world's resources. In 2007, the average American was purchasing one piece of clothing every 5.4 days and discarding 78 pounds of textiles every year. That's an absurd rate of consumption. What's even more unsettling is how these clothes are constructed. Many of our garments are made with petroleum-based synthetics, chemically sprayed for anti-wrinkle quote-unquote benefits, and printed using inks with known carcinogens. The byproducts and waste end up in ecosystems on the other side of the world that look much different from the enticing point to purchase. Progressive research points to the idea that in order to change the world truly, we must look towards a more minimal way of life. The earth simply can't support a world full of overflowing walk-in closets and new trends for every season. Looking back, I pondered the social pressures behind my consumption. My friends and I wholeheartedly believed that life would somehow be better if only we had the trendiest garb. I wanted to be the woman who died with the most stuff without realizing that if one man dies with everything, the rest are left with nothing. Minimalism for me is not just an individual experience that makes my own life richer. 
It's a collective experience that improves the world as a whole. Perhaps it's time to reconsider our consumption mantra. Perhaps it could go something like this. If I know anything about being a world citizen, it's that the man who dies with the smallest footprint does the greatest good. You just listened to the post titled The Man Who Dies With The Most Stuff by Kristen Glenn with TheMinimalist.com. And if you're interested in getting one of The Minimalist's books for free, I raffle off a copy of their book every single month to a random person on my mailing list. You can join for free at oldpodcast.com or for a super quick way to join, you can text the word optimal to the number 44222. Besides being entered to win every month, you also get free spreadsheets from me. You'll hear from me personally once a week, often with pictures. And it's a really nice way to show me that you like what you hear. I'll leave it at that. Have a great holiday if you're here in the States and a great start to your week. And I'll catch you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hey, this is Dan from the Optimal Finance Daily Podcast, which is a lot like this show, except more focused on personal finance. Justin handpicks the best posts he can find from blogs and authors like Ramit Sethi, Mr. Money Mustache, and more, and I read them to you five days a week. So if you enjoy this podcast, come on over and subscribe to Optimal Finance Daily too. And together, we'll optimize your financial life. You've been listening to Optimal Living Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.